Throughout the problem solving section of the second grade addition and subtraction unit, students will apply components of the solve problem solving process as they represent and solve problems. This will include determining what is known and unknown, identifying situation and solution equations, creating representations, and applying a strategy to determine the summer difference and completing a solution statement. This section of the unit focuses on solving one-step word problems involving the comparison structure. Comparison problems, like part-part-whole problems, involve relationships between quantities rather than a joining or separating action. Comparison problems involve the comparison of two different sets. Because one set is compared to the other, one set is labeled the smaller quantity and the other set the larger quantity. The amount by which the larger set exceeds the smaller set is the difference. In a comparison problem, the difference, the smaller quantity, or the larger quantity can be unknown. Specific comparison recorded sheets have been provided for each story problem in this part of the unit. A common misconception when attempting to solve story problems is a reliance on keywords. Rather than understanding the structure of the problem, the student may make a plan solely based on a word they read in the problem. For example, a student may incorrectly assume that more always means that addition must be used. Here's an example. There were seven more bears than moose in the forest. There were 19 bears in the forest. How many moose were in the forest? If we model that on the strip diagram, we know that there were seven more bears than moose. That must mean that the bears is the larger quantity. We know there were 19 bears in the forest. So bears is 19. And that of this, there are seven more bears than moose. In the comparison problem, we must determine the number of moose. Because there are seven more bears than moose in this problem, subtraction rather than addition will be used to solve this problem. To help overcome this misconception, students should be encouraged to use strip diagrams to represent quantities and the relationship among quantities in a word problem. Students can also be encouraged to use physical manipulatives to model problems. Additionally, the use of solve will support students in understanding how to analyze and solve word problems rather than solely relying on keywords. Throughout the rest of this video, these strategies will be modeled when representing and solving comparison problems. Present a real world scenario such as there were 26 female bears and 14 male bears in a forest. How many more female bears are there than male bears? Discuss what is known and what is unknown. In this problem, we know the larger and smaller quantities, the 26 female bears and the 14 male bears. What is unknown is the difference, how many more female bears there are compared to the male bears. The structure of this problem is comparison, difference, unknown. Base 10 blocks will be used to represent the number of female bears compared to the number of male bears. The larger quantity, 26, should be modeled on top of the smaller quantity, 14. So we're going to use base 10 blocks to represent the 26 female bears. Compared to the 14 male bears. Our difference is unknown. This is what we're trying to determine. In our strip diagram, we're going to represent the same information. There are 26 female bears, which is the larger quantity, compared to the 14 male bears, and we have a difference that's unknown. The use of a number line may help students see the relationship between the two quantities being compared. We're going to model where to place each quantity in relationship to the other. So our female bears, we're going to represent 26. And with the male bears, we're going to represent 14. Students will use the base 10 blocks and the number lines to compare the two quantities. Students must recognize that both quantities are composed of at least 14. 
In order to show the difference between the two quantities on the base 10 model, students must show how the smaller quantity is 14 and how the larger quantity is composed of 14 and another part, which is the difference. So we're going to draw a dotted line. So here's that 14. So we're trying to represent how the larger quantity is composed of 14 and that difference, the how many more bears, female bears there are than male bears. On the number line, we can also represent that. So here's 14. And again, 26 is composed of 14 and that difference that we're trying to determine. Because students need to determine the unknown difference, they need to generate a situation equation. A situation equation is a number sentence that corresponds with the placement of the unknown quantity based on the structure of the problem. In this problem, we know there are 26 female bears, the larger quantity, compared to the 14 male bears. And we have a difference that's unknown. So our situation equation is 26 minus 14 equals the difference. Here, the unknown is isolated, so our solution equation is identical to the situation equation. In order to determine the difference, students can use a variety of strategies. The base 10 model can be used, and students can count the base 10 units to determine the difference. So we know the part that's 14, and we can count the difference. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There are 12 more female bears than male bears. On the number line, students can either count back from 26 or they can count up from 14 to determine the difference. So a student might decide to count back. They know if they take away 6, that will get them to 20. Then they can count back to 14. So 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14. They took away 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We know 6 and 6 is 12, so they've counted back by 12. And we've gotten to 14, our smaller quantity. Once students have demonstrated an understanding of the comparison structure and how to develop the situation equation, it's no longer necessary to concretely model the comparison using base 10 blocks. Students can represent the quantities in a strip diagram and apply a strategy such as pictorial representations, partial differences, or the standard algorithm to determine the difference. So for example, once students understand the structure, and they can represent it here, they can apply a standard algorithm to determine that again, the difference is 12. There are 12 more female bears than male bears. Now let's look at a comparison larger quantity unknown scenario. There are 15 owls in a field. There are 11 more squirrels than owls in the field. How many squirrels are in the field? Students should discuss what is known and what is unknown. In this problem, we know the smaller quantity, the 15 owls. I know that's smaller than the number of squirrels because I also have the difference. It's telling me there are 11 more squirrels than owls. So the owls must be the smaller quantity. What is unknown is the larger quantity. I'm trying to figure out how many squirrels are in the field. We're going to use base 10 blocks to represent what we know. In our recording sheet, we know the number of owls. It's 15. So I'm going to represent the 15 using base 10 blocks. I'm trying to figure out the number of squirrels, the larger quantity. That's unknown. In my strip diagram, again, I know squirrels is the larger quantity. Owls is the smaller quantity. I know there are 15 owls, but the quantity of squirrels is unknown. Students will need to generate a situation equation to represent the structure of the problem. Some quantity of squirrels, the larger quantity, compared to 
the 15 owls, the smaller quantity, equals a difference of 11. This is our situation equation. Because the larger unknown is not isolated in the situation equation, we have to write a solution equation. A solution equation is a number sentence that can be used to solve for the unknown quantity. So in order to figure out this larger quantity, I would have to combine the 15, the smaller quantity, and the difference of 11 to determine my larger quantity, which is unknown. Students should use base 10 blocks to help represent this. Students should recognize that the larger quantity is composed of at least 15 and then the difference. Students can draw a dotted line to help represent that. So again, because squirrels is larger, a larger quantity, there must be at least 15 squirrels. And now we're going to represent that difference, the 11 more squirrels. So we've represented the 15 and then the 11 more. In our strip diagram, we would repre represent the difference here. And now we can again see that the larger quantity is going to be composed of the smaller quantity and the difference. By using the base 10 box, students should be able to determine that the larger quantity is 26. They could count, or here I can see 10, 5 more makes 15, 15, 10 more makes 25, and then 26. My base 10 block showed me that the larger quantity is 26. The use of a number line may also help students see the relationship between the two quantities. So if we're using the number line, we're going to model that smaller quantity first, the owls. So there were 15 owls. The larger quantity was unknown, but I know it's composed of at least that smaller quantity. So that 15 and then the 11 more. Students could use various ways to get 11 more on here. They can be flexible in how they represent that, but I know again, 15 plus 11 more is 26. Using either the base 10 model or the number line, students should be able to determine that there are 26 squirrels in the field. We've used these representations to model the structure. After students understand the comparison structure, they can determine the situation and solution equations and then apply an addition strategy to determine the larger quantity. So if we're at that point and we use the standard algorithm, we know our solution equation is 15 plus 11. 15 plus 11, again, we get 26. Now let's look at a comparison smaller quantity unknown scenario. There are 24 woodpeckers in the forest. There are 13 fewer owls than woodpeckers in the forest. How many owls are in the forest? Students should discuss what is known and what is unknown. In this problem, we know the larger quantity, the 24 woodpeckers. We also know the difference, that there are 13 fewer owls than woodpeckers. The unknown is the smaller quantity. We need to determine the number of owls in the forest. Students should use base 10 blocks to represent the number of woodpeckers. There are 24 woodpeckers, which is the larger quantity. The smaller quantity of owls is represented with a question mark because it's unknown. In the strip diagram, we know there are 24 woodpeckers and we have an unknown smaller quantity of owls. Students will need to generate a situation equation to represent the structure of the problem. There are 24 woodpeckers, the larger quantity, 
compared to the unknown number of owls, and that equals a difference of 13. The unknown smaller quantity is not isolated in the situation equation, so a solution equation must be utilized to show how to solve for the unknown smaller quantity. Our solution equation would be 24 minus 13 equals the unknown. Students should use the base 10 blocks to help determine the smaller quantity. Students must recognize that the larger quantity is composed of an amount equal to the smaller quantity and the difference of 13. Students must determine how to decompose 24 into 13 and the unknown quantity. Direct students to start at the right side of the base 10 model and have students count 13 units moving to the left. So we're gonna decompose 24 into 13 and this unknown part. So we're gonna start at the right-hand side and count back 13 units. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. We decompose the difference in our strip diagram. The difference of 13 is represented here. Then we can use the remaining base 10 blocks to determine the quantity that's equal to the smaller quantity of owls. We can see we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. There are 11 owls, our smaller quantity. The use of a number line can also help students see the relationship between the two quantities. Stu students should place the larger quantity on the top number line. So 24. And we're going to decompose 24 to help determine our smaller quantity. We know the difference, 13, so students would need to represent counting back 13 units. Students can be flexible in how they do that. For example, they could do 10 and then three more. But when they count back 13 units, they should determine that the smaller quantity is 11. There are 11 owls in the forest. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Elementary Math Minutes. We hope you'll find these videos helpful and we look forward to you joining us next time. See you then.